Thanks for joining the second hour of Shake, Rattle, and Troll this morning. We appreciate you tuning in and listening. Uh, with me, as always, my co-host, Wingman, the voice of moderation and reason, morning, John Colazar. Morning, Best Daddy. You feeling any better? I'm working at it. I'm you, getting there. You don't look any better at all. Well, that's that's why we both have faces made for radio. Oh, thanks, J.K., for pointing that out. I uh, appreciate you guys indulging us today. Uh, we've got a really special guest, Congressman Chris Stewart. From the great state of uh, Utah, one of our neighbors that we've been uh, working with, and I want to welcome the congressman. Good morning, sir. Good morning, and to my friends in the South, it's an honor to be with you. Absolutely. You know, uh, we feel that way uh, just, you know, being in your presence, or at least the voice. Uh, before we get started, uh, uh, congressman, I want to thank you for your hospitality in Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, you've got an awesome, awesome staff. Uh, we tried to tried to do a trade in Utah. We wanted to uh, trade Jeff Flake and get you to come down here to Arizona, and they just weren't <laughs> buying that at all. <laughs> well, okay, I'll take that up with Jeff and see what he'd say. I, I do have great staff, but look, you and I, and, and you know your listeners and others, we're trying to accomplish the same thing. So, if we can help you in any way, uh, we're going to do that. And then once in a while, we're going to come to you and ask you to help us. So we're one team on this, on these important issues. Absolutely. And uh, I want to thank you uh, once again for your uh, service to the country. I, I, you know, I didn't know until I got inside your office that you were actually a fighter pilot. Wow. Yeah, 14 years in the Air Force. I got to tell you, too, dude, that was a lot more fun doing that than it is in being in Congress. You know, having been back there a number of times, I don't know how you guys get anything done at all. Yeah, well, that's the problem is too often we don't get anything done, and it's not that we don't try, especially the Republicans in the House. I mean, you got to give give these guys credit. I mean, we have passed, and I know this isn't what you want to talk about, but 396 bills we passed in the in the House last Congress that dealt with all of the major issues. They go to that great graveyard called the Senate and die, and it is frustrating. But, you know, again, we keep trying, and we keep fighting, and, and we work with our friends and see what we can do. Congressman, how many of those 396 made it through the Senate? Do you know? Oh, maybe. Uh, you know, I don't know offhand, uh, but I'll tell you this. It wasn't very many. I would say, and, and, well, let me, let me describe it this way. Of those that dealt with the major issues of our day, mm -hmm. you know, with regulatory reform, tax reform, entitlement reform, national security, NSA reform, I yep. mean, others, none of those made it through the Senate. So we may have one, a few of the minor bills, but the, you know, the major ones that. Uh, and of course, everybody the points the finger at you then too. Yeah, yeah, and that's okay. I mean, but you know, we, we it is frustrating because not because I want uh, we want credit, we just want to fix things, and that's the thing that uh, that, you, that frustrates us sometimes is because we're not getting enough accomplished to change things for people. Wow, what a process! Listen. Uh couple things. I know you've been pretty heavily engaged in the uh, greater sage grass issue, and I, I want to spend a, a few minutes with you on that because we're working with our Utah partners uh, and uh, some of the other 11, uh, 10, would be 10 other states, uh, including Utah, on trying to get the uh, GS, uh, GSG language into the NDAA. And uh, cause I, I personally feel yeah. like, you know, this whole thing, you know, the way it's written in, in uh, you know, DOI has agreed that it doesn't need to be listed. They came out with a memo, said, yeah, we're going to recognize uh, one state to implement the uh, state management program, but don't recognize the other states. But, uh, you know, I yeah. think one, one of the big things is the seven uh, military base closures, the 75 uh, million acres of restriction uh, from February to September. What what are your thoughts on that, being a former aviator? Well, look, I mean, what's the fundamental responsibility of the, of the federal government is to keep us safe. And if we don't support our military, if we put every other priority above that, what is the outcome going to be? Because it's not going to be our, our safety and national security. And the other thing I would say on this is, it, it, I think you understand, and I bet most of your listeners understand, if you allowed the states to implement their management plans, we would protect the sage grouse. I mean, as a sportsman, none of us want that, that beautiful bird to go extinct. For heaven's sakes, it's the last thing in the world we want. All we argue is that the states have, have reasonable plans that allow us to protect the bird, while at the same time not shutting off military installations, not shutting off uh, hunting and access, not shutting off energy development. We can actually do both. And I remember I was running in the morning, and uh, 
And Neil Cornsey called me and, you know, of course, the director of BLM, and he, he's congratulating us for our efforts and says, you know, we've decided not to list the grouse. And I was like, ooh, that's great news. But then we find out immediately that they, although they didn't list it, they developed management plans that were as severe as if they had listed it. And that's the challenge we have now is, you know, working with the BLM and other agencies to develop a more reasonable management plan. Uh, yeah. You know, they, they say, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. Is the uh, two-year language uh, we suggested a uh, two-year uh, limitation be added into that language? Is that going to uh, gain any traction or get implemented? Well, I, I think so. In fact, the, the the bill that I'm well, first I, I legislated a bill that would have forbid them from listing it, you know, in perpetuity. But you know, we're not going to get that. We've gone from ten to five. Five is what I'm supporting, and I think. Uh, I think that's actually doable. Now, a lot of it's going to depend on John McCain, actually, because, you know, he's the chairman in the Senate. I mean, the House is solid on this. We know what we want to do, and there's not much controversy in the House. Wish we could get the same thing through the Senate. I think we will, uh, but shame on the Senate if they don't. I mean, we're just asking for such a reasonable accommodation. There's just no reason in the world for the Senate not to work with us on this, and and uh, in, including Democrats. I mean, what we're asking for just isn't that much, and, and I hope they will. I really do, and, and everything that I've heard up to this point leads me to be cautiously optimistic, but, but quite cautiously. Hmm. As sportsmen, uh, Congressman, what, what can we do that we already have not done in order to help the process? I know the Democrats, well, uh, the, the Democrats recently had a sit-in in Congress. Can we come do that? Yeah, well, that'd be fun if you did. <laughs> yeah, you uh, bet I would. You know, the, at the end of the day, if if we want to help on this, and this will sound terribly partisan, but it's true. But elect more Republicans. I mean, that's what we got to do. We've got to get more more people in Washington who are willing to accommodate. And again, you and I don't want to see this this uh, this or any species go extinct. We just don't, and it's nuts to suggest that we don't care. But we need more friends and allies in the in the in the House and the Senate who will work with us. And, and the other thing is you all have been very engaged, and you say, what can we do that we haven't already done? Well, the reality is is you've already done a lot and probably done everything that you could do. So let's just keep the pressure on, keep the pressure on those elected officials who will be making these decisions. Well, you know, it's not just the, the, the listing itself. Uh, the bird, you know, we put it out here on the radio, newsletters, uh, emails, all that kind of stuff. The bird's at a healthy replicating uh, population. But the, but the thing that I find most of – two things I find objectionable, one, one worse than others. A, the uh, left side is willing to sacrifice national and military security uh, for a bird. That, that's just wrong. The second big issue is we're already facing in Utah, the Bears Ears, 1.9 million acres, uh, Grand Canyon National Monument, 1.7 acres, Sedona, another 160,000 acres, Sonoran, 446,000 acres. And then you throw the sage grouse issue in there. That's 165 million acres over over 11 states. You've got a, a, a closed corridor all the way from Mexico through your state, my state, and other states clear to the Canadian border. That's just wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when you talk about those numbers, it's frightening, isn't it? And I remember, and, and, and I think you do as well, when – President Clinton didn't have the courage to come to Utah. He stood down there in your in you guys' place and said, "I create the Grand Escalante National Monument in Utah. I create that over there." And I'm afraid this president's going to do the same thing. And I, I may be pessimistic, but I've been saying for you know half a year or more. I don't think there's any question that he's going to create the the, the Bears Ears Monument. I think he's pretending. I think he's going through the motions to say, "Yeah, I listened to the local folks. You know, I reached out." I, I think he cares far more about the extreme environmental community than he does about most of us here in the West. Well, Heidi Gold uh, he doesn't come does. to Utah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, he doesn't come to Utah to get votes. He doesn't come to Arizona to get votes. And and I think that's probably true of, you know, uh, Secretary Clinton as well. And, and I think he views this as one of his great legacies. And, you know, all we're asking once again is you got to talk to the local folks. you got to see the impact it has on their lives. I mean, Grand Escalante is in my, my district, and, and it's destroyed families down there. They can't stay together. They can't ranch. The, the mining jobs went away. The timber jobs went away. And they all end up moving away, and you've got dying schools and dying communities. And why in the world do we think that's a good outcome? And they say, well, yeah, but you got tourism jobs. Well, you know, show me someone who can raise a family 
off a tourism job that they work from May to September because that's a tough, tough thing to do. Look, the Grand Canyon's having pro- they can't get water to Tuzion now, much less if there's yeah. another monument. I mean, it's you know they're worried about tourism. The fact of the matter, the truth is, they're at an operating deficit to begin with. I don't know where they think they're going to get the the additional funds, either in in Utah or in Arizona, to to continue managing uh, these guys. We, we're seeing uh, the BLM, the Forest Service, the Fish and Wildlife Service, and EPA. The only, you know, they're deficient in their fiduciary management responsibilities, and they're managing by restriction and closure. And what we're trying to get yeah. across to the sportsmen in both states and the general populace, look, when I say this is a national monument and it's restricted, you're not going there. You're not going to go there to pick flowers, watch birds. You're, you're off the landscape. Yeah. And isn't it ironic? I mean, I don't know if you have this argument in, in Arizona or, uh, you know, other other states, but here in Utah, again, they say, well, we're going to protect it. We're going to protect it for our posterity. We're going to be able to enjoy it. Well, well you can enjoy it if you can't get there. Exactly. You can enjoy it if it cuts off access. And, you know, you know, maybe the Secretary of Interior can get there and go enjoy it, but the rest of us can't. And it, it's a it's a, an ironic argument that they say we protect it while at the same time we won't allow anyone to view it or to enjoy it. Well, I've been tracking uh, what's going on on the Bears Ears uh, pretty closely. Uh, we got an uh, uh, article out of one of your newspapers, and uh, maybe you remember, John, I don't remember what it was. Uh, but they had found uh, a money trail between the Pew Foundation and Leonardo DiCaprio, of all people, $15.6 million dollars. Uh, to the proponents of the Bears Ears, and I, I got an email uh, this week. Leo DiCaprio Foundation is uh, being questioned by DOJ for the Malaysian scandal. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, look, we've got uh, Colin Kaepernick, and NFL needs to be boycotted. The Hollywood industry needs to be boycotted, along with Starbucks and Denny's, because they want to charge me $6.49 for a waffle. Uh, you, you know, it's like, what in the hell is going on in America? Congressman, he typically yeah. goes off on this if he hasn't been on his meds, so it's okay. That, well, you quit it. I haven't had my waffle. <laughs> the biggest thing that we're finding, yeah. though, as you're pointing out, is is that um, because of the inability of the federal government to manage the landscape, they're operating under an exclusionary process, and that's going to continue and the more land that they lop off, the more they're pushing people, communities, families, and development out of each state in the West. Yeah. Well, and they're, and they're pushing it out of the rural areas. I mean, I grew up in a little tiny town. I grew up ranching and farming. I was milking cows when I was six years old. Uh, but, you know, little towns like that, 290 people, those, as I've said, those towns are really struggling. And it forces communities into the cities along what we call the Wasatch Front here between Provo and Ogden and Salt Lake City which are, you know, expected to double in a, in, a, in a frighteningly short amount of time. Well, part of the reason is the influx from the rural communities, and those folks, many of them don't necessarily want to move to Salt Lake City, but they're forced to because they have to get a job. And the reason they can't get a job is because their dad's ranching allotments or grazing allotments got cut in half, or because their, their uncle who used to, who used to coal mine and was making $70,000 a year, which in rural Utah is good, good money, uh, you know, that job went away. Uh, so, you know, it, it, I, I would challenge any one of these people, Leonardo DiCaprio or any of them, come sit down with some of the families that will be impacted and tell them that you think it's okay to do this for an area that I doubt uh, some of these folks in Hollywood will ever visit even once in their lives. Have them come talk to these families and tell them that what they view is more important than it is keeping these families together. I agree totally. Well said, too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, are you uh, having any, any uh, interaction with uh, Mike Knoll in your southern district? Oh, yeah. How could you How could you know Mike and not have interaction with him? He's like a hero. <laughs> I'll tell you what. He <laughs> is, he's, he, he's like the John Wayne from Utah. Did you yeah, yeah. He's just, he's just bigger in life. You know, Mike's, Mike's a good friend of mine. He's one of the first people that I met when I decided to run. Everyone told me, you got to get to know Mike Noel. you got to get to know Mike. And and he's as he's as good on these issues as anyone I know. Uh, so no, uh, Mike and I talk frequently, and like I said, he's one of my heroes. Well, we're engaged with uh, Mike uh, 
and uh, Mike Styler from your DNR uh, through uh, on the Arizona lead on Big Game Forever, Ryan Benson and, and some of the other boys from Utah, and uh, trying to derail this thing, uh, you know, both not, not only on the greater sage grouse, but the uh, monument restrictions. It's just uh, catastrophic yep. if, the, if this things go yep. through. Well, it's not over yet. I mean, like I said, I, I'm worried that he's, the president is going to do it, but it's not over yet, and we can't concede the fight. we got to keep in this thing up, up until you know the very last moment when we find out. And, and you know what? Maybe we'll find out that the pressure really did make a difference, and in that case, you know, we're going to have a great celebration because it's taken uh, tens of thousands of people have gotten involved with this issue, people who care about the West, who care about protecting it, but care about protecting families and our way of life as well. And, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe Washington will, will, will actually take up and notice us. I sure hope so. How big of an influence has uh, CEQ been on this uh, monument issue? Uh, do, you, do you know the answer to that? Well, I don't, in, I don't specifically, other than CEQ is, you know, they carry a big stick. There's no doubt about that. And, and out in that area, you've got some oil and gas development that, uh, that you know, they, they're working closely with CEQ and, and the federal regulators as well. Uh, so it, I'm certain that they were involved at some point and or to some level. Now I, I can't speak specifically, but uh, but there's no no way they weren't involved, uh, you know, on some uh, some degree. Well, we're trying to bring some uh, uh, diversive uh, action against them and try to put pressure on them to put pressure on the White House, uh, on the Obama administration, uh, uh, through certain channels to, uh, you know. You know the drill is called a gr- uh, grill Just don't tactic. designate yeah. it. You know, don't use the Antiquities yeah. Act. It, yeah. it doesn't follow on Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's one of the objections that so many of us have, and that is, uh, you know, if you want to create a 2 million acre monument, then use Congress to do it. And if it's the will of the people, and I'm saying the national will, not just the will of the, of the state that's impacted, but if it was the, the uh, overwhelming will of the people, that would happen anyway. But the Antiquities Act was, you know, it was expected they would create, you know, monuments that were Abraham Lincoln's farm, for example. You know, relatively small. I want to say relatively small. I'm talking about a few dozen acres, maybe. And, and buildings and actual monuments, it wasn't ever intended that you take two million acres at a time. Although both of you have made, have made a larger point in that it's not just the Antiquities Act we're worried about. You can essentially take control of that land through a sage grouse listing or another ESA listing, uh, much the same way, and it's not a few million acres, it's tens of millions of acres. That's correct. Yeah. Well, well, that's, well, we're, that, that's good stuff. Um, again, uh, Congressman, I really appreciate what you guys are doing up in Arizona. I wish uh, all the western states had a contingency of uh, competent uh, representatives like you do uh, in Utah. We have uh, Congressman Gosar is kind of what we're like in U2, uh, in Utah, I mean, without you 2 guys, uh, we'd really be going backwards. Well, Paul and I are good friends. We've worked together on a number of issues. You know, some of them are related to land, some of them, you know, completely completely separate. But uh, I have tremendous respect for him, and uh, and I just wish we had more more like Paul. Well, we're, we've got the election coming up. We're, we're thinking pretty hard about it. And uh, the best part about uh, Congressman Gosar, when he comes in, he brings J.K. a brand-new toothbrush. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you there you go. All right. Well, if I ever come down there, I'll I'll try and remember that. Bring one as well. Okay. Uh, I want to thank all you right. for your time. Yeah. Thank you for your service and all the good things you do for uh, yeah. all of the American citizenry. It was, it was good to be with you. Let's do it again. Absolutely, you. Congressman. Thank there you go, folks. Uh, our neighbor, uh, Congressman Chris Stewart from Utah. Awesome guy. Uh, I'll tell you, the treatment in his office was. Uh, uh, equal to uh, Paul Gosar when you walk in. It's very comfortable. Uh, it's got a high level, uh, highly wired staff on it. And uh, awesome guy. Yeah, he sounds like it. Yeah. Well, Anybody you know what? who's been a fighter pilot, they're cool. You know what? I've got respect for all the military guys, but it takes a special breed of cat, breed of cat to strap his butt to a bottle on it. It's got bombs on it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely.